time um, from your schedule to do this. Uh, we are um, so excited about the 2019 cookie season. I cannot believe we're already cookie training. I can't believe that uh, it is October 23rd, but sooner then we think it will be January, so let's get started. We, um, our theme this year is a bigger, brighter, bolder Girl Scout cookie season. We are going for bold. And what um, we hope to accomplish here in our service unit cookie consultant training, uh, like I said, we're gonna try and make this very short, much shorter than the hour and a half training for the recorded webinar. Um, we want to learn about your role as the 2019, for the 2019 cookie sale, what you can do as a service unit cookie consultant um, that you can see what you can see differently in eBuddy and then in the Troop app. And then being able to help train other leaders. We know that you train a lot more than um, how to just do the cookie sale. You're also, you know, a mediator. You're also a, uh, you know, a venting session for a lot of the other leaders. So definitely so that you can see, um, you know, how you can help navigate the situation. And then you can't be expected to remember everything that we're gonna talk about. So where, where the resources are to help find question, uh, answers to questions that come up during the cookie sale. So if you don't know me, I'm Melissa Walton. I'm a product sales manager. I am um, the, not wearing a hat and wearing sunglasses in this picture. This was from our Disney trip. And then my uh, teammate, Morgan Kling and Peel here. And uh, this is us on our Disney trip last year when we took top sellers to Disney. Um, but I definitely want to talk to, we went from a three person team to a two person team. So um, a lot of our responsibilities have kind of been shifted. We have to rely on some other um, teams like the customer care team and troop support now uh, to help us out. So we really, really want to utilize the info at gswestok.org. Um, there are times that I won't be in the office during cookie season because I'm out helping to um, the deliveries and things like that. So I won't be sitting here. So we want to make sure that people are calling the, the main line 405-528-4475 and using info at gswestok.org. Um, we will not be handling eBuddy moves this year. So customer care will be in charge of that. So it, to get it, all these things done faster, um, they will be able to take those immediately if you use info at gswestok.org where they might sit in my email uh, for a little bit longer if I'm not behind my desk able to just go ahead and quickly pick those up. So for um, the fastest service, always info at gswestok.org. So fun little graphic here of um, where what we did last year, where we came from. So we had 7,521 girl members and of those, um, you know, that's throughout 39 counties, 23 service units, and 390 plus traditional troops. And so, of course, we've had over 106 years of experience of um, leadership in Girl Scouting. And so one of the cool parts about that is how does that reflect in um, the adventures that were powered by Girl Scout cookies? And last year, we sold the most cookies we've ever sold as Girl Scouts Western Oklahoma at 1,275,000 boxes of cookies in 52 days of the cookie season. Uh, we had you know, seven or 3,966 girls selling and 350 troops selling cookies. So uh, one of the coolest parts about that is what um, the average troop makes. And so each troop that participates in the Girl Scout cookie sale, um, the average troop proceeds was $2,186. And so that's pretty amazing. It's a lot of money for troops to go out and do um, you know, service projects, travel trips, a lot of different options that come through uh, the Girl Scout cookie sale. And it's a really amazing number to see the amount of um, money that troops can earn through the cookie sale. So why do the Girl Scout cookie program? <laughs> what, that's probably one of the number one things that you get from um, troops, parents, any other uh, you know, outside people, what is the purpose of the Girl Scout Cookie Program? And it really is a cookie program. It's much, much more than a fundraiser for our, um, for our troops. So we all know it started in um, Muskogee, Oklahoma in 1917. The mistletoe troops sold cookies in their cafeteria, uh, high school cafeteria to send, uh, raise money to send troop packages overseas. And um, they, uh, let turned into the largest girl-led business in the world. So a really fun story I like to tell is you can get into really crazy wormholes about um, Juliet Lowe and all the really cool things that she did and how she helped sustain us. But she, in 1920, wanted to, or 
yeah, for the 1920 Girl Scout budget for the entire organization, she wanted to raise a million dollars, and that was going to help get a campground that was specifically for Girl Scouts. So a million dollars in 1920, that's a lot, a lot of money. And she um, was having a little bit of trouble. She was getting the, a couple of, uh, you know, good support, but not, not enough to get to the million dollars. And so she just was surprised that people hadn't heard about Girl Scouts. So she went uh, and rented a plane and flew, somebody flew her, but she rode in a plane and she threw out Girl Scout pamphlets from this airplane and she wanted to get the word out that Girl Scouting was here to stay. Well, one of the part of that is that she, um, she looked around and she saw that troops were having success by making these cookies and selling them. And she saw sustain sustainability in that. And this is a way that if we can't get general funding, that we didn't need that, we could sustain ourselves. So the Girl Scout cookie program really has always been the purpose of making sure that Girl Scouts run and that we um, can be self-sufficient. And so that is um, still currently why we do it today so that troops can have money, um, councils can have money to make sure that we are able to provide programming right here in Oklahoma. So all the proceeds generated from the Girl Scout uh, Girl Scouts Western Oklahoma cookie sale. Once we pay the bakery, all of that money stays right here in troops and in the Girl Scout Western Oklahoma Council. And for the girls, it was, of course, all about the five skills. So goal setting, decision making, money management, people skills, and business ethics. Some of these are a little bit easier to see in the girls, but they really are um, the purpose of the program. And so we really want to highlight to leaders that this is how um, we, this is how the girls learn and it's okay to make mistakes that's why we're adults and that's why we're there but when they are setting goals we don't tell them no we ask them what they want to do we help them make the budget for it how many cookies is that going to be maybe that gets scaled back um, that's where the decision making process is in, is in play of where um, they're going to spend their money is that something that they want to sell a little bit more do extra fundraising so that they can um, have enough money to go first class or maybe they go coach and they uh, don't have to work as hard um, but then money management they're going to make mistakes but counting back customers change um, doing you know the math for customers it's okay that's why we're there and that's when they learn by making those mistakes and of course you see the people skills um, that's the most obvious is learning to talk to different people and then the business ethics of being honest and responsible uh, following the rules uh, when you take money you're going to give it back to your troop all of the um, the business ethics that are are there every time we interact with customers so there are two Girl Scout bakeries, and we use Little Brownie Bakery, and they are baking big brands for her business. So our product lineup has not changed. Um, we have Girl Scout s'mores that are back and um, Toffee-tastic, and no change in the way that they are ordered this year, so that nothing has to be pre-ordered. Everything will be available in cupboards. Um, and then... A little bit of a teaser. Um, it was rumored for last year, um, but the lemon cookie, uh, it does look like there's going to be um, a very possible change for the 2020 year. So um, when that is, if that announcement gets made and is absolutely 100% confirmed and we are putting that out, I will let you guys be the first to know for sure, but I would count on it um, making a change for 2020. So cookies um, for, from Little Brownie Bakery are as good as treats can be. No high fructose corn syrup. They took out the partially hydrogenated oils. Um, you know, we still have the Thin Mints uh, being vegan. So um, that is, there still is sometimes food, but they are um, definitely something that have been worked on and worked on to make sure that they are um, cleaning them up. Part of you definitely know that there has been a uh, announcement for the other bakery is having a uh, new gluten-free cookie this year. I believe it's like a salted caramel chocolate chip. And so this, um, our answer to that, well, we're not having that cookie, but it is five years of Toffee Tastics. And so there's gonna be a lot of media um, in January. So January 8th is actually National English Toffee Day. So there will be a big party and a lot of social media around um, that and help elevating the Toffee Tastic and celebrating that it is five years old this year.
it is something that continues to rise and rise in our council. We go up almost a full percentage point is one of the things that we couldn't keep in stock the first uh, two weeks of the um, of the sale last year. So we will definitely be encouraging um, a little bit higher of toffee tactics for your troop for initial order. We'll talk about that. And then also we will be doing, um, you know, have make sure we have enough on hand in the council cupboard to be able to sustain that. New this year, so S'mores does have a new package. So um, it is, this doesn't do a very good job of showing it since it's a cartoon kind of illustration, but it is a soft packaging. So it's more like an Oreo. When you get Oreos at the store, they come with the plastic tray inside, but it is a um, softer or a plastic wrap outside instead of the cardboard. So it is about 33% less packaging. But um, then the cardboard, but is the same amount of cookies. So still 8.5 ounces of cookies, same amount of everything, just um, now in a plastic sleeve instead of a um, cardboard box. So uh, there is a template that we'll put up in the eBuddy Help Center for a display option. Uh, the just one thing you really have to look out with this is there is dropping the cases will damage the cookies a little bit more than in the um, the cardboard case. So that will be the only thing to really train extra on, um, but it's the same exact ounces for um, this uh, different packaging. So now we're going to get wild about cookies. Oh, a little graphic there. There's Miss Carly the Clouded Leopard. She is our mascot this year. Uh, the girls did uh, nationwide did get to vote, and Carly is the number one uh, name for Miss clouded leopard there. So let's talk about you as the service unit, cookie consultant, things you have already received, hopefully shipped directly from Little Brownie Bakery. Um, you should have received the troop cookie consultant manuals, print permission slips, the troop receipt books, the girl envelopes, the girl order cards, which we ask you to hold until January. So um, there's no temptation to take pre-orders, um, but if you will hang on to those, you can pass out all of the rest of the materials if you would like. And then uh, the training cookies. So if you got a brown box with a sampler, those are for your cookie tr troop cookie training. So if you're doing the webinar with us on November 13th, or if you're holding your own, um, on a different date, just make sure you have cookies for um, everyone to, for the leaders to taste and, you know, every meeting's a little bit better when you have some cookies. And then you should have got some loose boxes of Samoas in that as well. So those are your troop cookies and each troop gets a box of cookies so that the girls can try them. And uh, this year we're doing Samoas. So that is, um, that should have already arrived to you as the service unit cookie installed. And if you have any, um, you didn't receive any of those things, please send me an email. We will get you a, um, we will get you figured out with a uh, little brownie on where those are. So um, in today's materials, so we will be sending these out to your service units uh, through in the next couple of weeks through service unit meetings. Um, you will receive a, it's a mandala bag. It's just a, a bag that hopefully you as the service unit cookie consultant can keep all of your stuff together for the cookie season. And then we gave you enough tr folders for troops in your area. And we put that um, troop checklist right on each folder so that you can hold, hopefully work with uh, your troop leaders and take all of their um, uh, paperwork, anything that they want to turn in, any notes that you need to take on them and have it all in one little section. And then inside those folders are also the cookie covered credit cards. So however you would like to do it, but we suggest that once they turn in their troop cookie consultant form to you, then you can give that troop their cookie covered credit cards. And those they do need to have um, so that they can get cookies out of the cookie cupboard. We'll talk more about that too. Okay. Service unit cookie rallies. You as the service unit cookie consultant do not have to be in charge of the service unit cookie rally. Somebody else in the service unit could be taking that on. Maybe it's a troop that has older girls, um, but they, um, the cookie rally guides are available. I will send those out after everybody gets trained. My last service unit training is tomorrow. Uh, so on Thursday, I will send out an email that will have all of the information that we talked about. So the, the, the slides for this, um, a copy of the recording and the um, cookie rally 
guide will be attached. And then I'll also have the link for the super service unit um, cookie rally order supply form. So what we do is we provide um, items for each rally activity and main items. So your service unit might have to provide scissors or um, uh, markers, things like that. But we will give you all the printables and any of the main items needed for the project. And then um, you can check out sample recognition kits and cookie costumes. But along with every um, activity, one activity will correspond to the five skills that the girls need to learn and then so for practice and then they will be able to order or earn their girl scout cookie activity pen and so those will be available in the shop they will be um, per, need to be purchased separately but at least if, if every girl that attends the cookie rally will be um, go through and all of the steps to earn that cookie activity pen um, the other items available for the service unit to purchase is the cookie rally patches and the cookies for taste testing and all of that information will be in the cookie order supply form we are still going to do the cookie rally team this is what it's going to look like this year one of the um, only changes is that now the order form it'll be just like it has been in the past only the order form will be through the um, shop so uh, the shop will do the exact same thing that we used to do they'll take all the online orders they will um, get the deadline of december 10th so troops will be ordering these. Uh, the service unit does not have to worry about getting it, just helping us spread the information. But after the troop training in November, we'll send out an eBuddy link to all the troop train or troop leaders, and they will get or uh, have the option to order T-shirts, and then they will be sorted out by the shop and delivered with your cookie rally supplies um, or picked up. Uh, available for pickup with your cookie rally um, supplies in January and they will be sorted out by troops so you as a service unit person can just pull them out of the bag or uh, pull a bag out have you know troop 310 and it is uh, all ready to go so like I said you guys are always doing um, more than just cookie training you're you know therapy for other troop leaders a lot of the time. So when troops say, what can I be doing now for the sales? So they really need to be working through the designated, um, like who is going to be in charge of cookies. Sometimes that's two or, that's two or more people. Sometimes somebody is in charge of taking all bank deposits to the bank. Somebody can um, only be in charge of getting in and getting all of the booth sites um, in eBuddy. So everybody can have a different job, but who is going to be their actual troop cookie consultant and their main contact? and making sure that those people are um, either on the webinar uh, at your service unit for the webinar or training them in person. Uh, we also will record that webinar so they can watch that. Um, troops need to make sure that they have an up-to-date bank account and a current Checks Inc. form. One of the things in the service unit consultant manual that you will notice this year, we did take out the Checks Inc. form. It is a part of the uh, banking process. And since that's a little bit smoother now, um, we took it out of the cookie manual mainly because we were getting them after the cookie sale and we need them before the cookie sale. So they were being turned in with all of the final paperwork. Um, but since it is a part of the banking process, just make sure that they have that um, and they can work with their troop support person for that. Um, troop needs to have all the cookie paperwork turned into the service unit consultant. Uh, there are two different deadlines. Ones we ask for the service unit um, or for the sorry the troop leaders to turn in their troop consultant agreement and all the permission slips they have um, on January 3rd so um, and once again you can keep all of those in your folders uh, another huge one is making sure that their troop roster is clean on their MyGS site so on volunteer systems that is where we pull all of our information and if a um, change is to be made then we want to make sure that that gets done in volunteer systems as well to make sure that it's ongoing. So um, troops, if they can get in to their MyGS and troop support is working hard on this with everyone right now to make sure that they are uh, cleaned up and good to go by November 2nd, which is when we will start adding girls to eBuddy. Uh, talk to the troops about scheduling a parent meeting. We'll talk more about that. And then of course, what they want to do as a troop, so setting troop goals and working on cookie business badges uh, in you know October, November, and December so that they can get ready for the cookie sale. So what should troops be doing? They should be, one of the, the fun stories that I hear from 
recruitment all the time is that they come to um, you know their first Girl Scout like group gathering event we call them Girl Talks and so there might not even be a troop yet and all they want to talk about is cookies and what are, well how does the cookie sale work and how does that work well what we really need you to do to be successful for troops is to go ahead and get started with what your troop wants to accomplish so talk about what the girls want to do are they going to do a service project are they going to want to go on a trip do they just want to do some badges and have the troop pay for their badges so setting a goal that everybody can agree on and talk about what um, what that is going to look like and what a, a successful cookie sale will look like. So once you have a goal in mind and where you want to go, it'll make your troop uh, a little bit easier. Some of the things that we definitely want to make sure that troops remember, troop funds rules are troop funds must be voted on by the majority of the girls in the troop. So if you have five girls in your troop and only two girls are there, you need to wait until you have a majority to make decisions on what the troop funds will be uh, spent on. Funds are not to be used, or sorry, funds are to be used on all girls in the troop, regardless of if they participated in product sales or not. You cannot earmark um, money for girls saying that, well, if you sell 50 boxes, then you get $50 into, you know, to go on the trip. It has to be divided up equally among all the girls. And incentives for the cookie seller are given at the council level and not given through troop proceeds. So troop, um, Troop money is for all the girls. Just because somebody sells the most in your troop, you shouldn't be buying her an iPad or something like that. So um, all of these things are just good to keep in mind. One of the biggest, uh, I feel like, things we have to talk through with parents throughout the sale, and I know it's hard. You're always going to have just those those parents that uh, can never make it to a parent meeting or read uh, never read the paperwork they just sign it but um, having a parent meeting is the number one thing you can do to set up your parents and your troop for success in the cookie sale so having and it doesn't have to be long but just having a troop where or a meeting with the parents where you talk about what the girls wanted to do with their money so if they voted that they would like to go to um, you know six flags at the end of the year as their end of year celebration and letting parents know that and that we broke it down and this is how many cookies we have to sell and each girl wants to do this um, and it's a good time to talk about how the cookie sell works and um, distribute the parent permission slip so when we talk about um, what your troop will look like with the distribution of cookies and the collection of money this is a really good time to set it out that my hours as a troop leader to check out cookies will be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from this time to this time. You know, I also have a family, I also work, I do all these other things. I can't be available for you, you know, 100% of the time. And I know that's always a big rub of when people want more cookies and having to wait on cookies. So um, setting expectations up front with what that will look like, that you do expect money to come back every other week that you have to make ACH payments uh, to the council. So we would like for every meeting to set up a time and to how to collect money, uh, but then also go over the parent permission slip. We say that cookies cannot be returned to the troop. I know some leaders have a different way of doing that, but um, for those that do not, we any parent that ever calls up and is very upset that we will not, or the parent, a troop leader will not take them back, we always back you up and we have it spelled out and we have it on the parent permission slip that cookies cannot be returned to the troop. So if we can get that, um, a copy of their permission slip um, when we're having those issues up front, we can always send that back to them and say, this is where you signed and this is where you agreed to it. So um, let's figure out a different way for you get, to get those cookies sold. Uh, and the biggest part is having a, you know, when you have that parent meeting and you have the parent permission slips out, you're go ahead and collecting all of those parent permission slips, talking about receipts, talking about um, turning in money, and then social media and boost sales. So I do want to talk to you about social media. It's going to look not very much different this year, but it is um, a new official guideline from GSUSA. So the social media guidelines are for uh, friends and family, that girls are only to use the internet to market to friends and family, and friends and family is defined as people whom the girl and her family personally know. So this does extend a little bit further beyond um, just the girl, but it is that the Girl Scout Cookie Program is girl-led, and all online marketing efforts should always be led by the girl and, while being supervised. So um, girls should be making these decisions and helping putting it on there, but the 
biggest part, is there's no change in this, that it is always for accounts set to private, and it's always for um, your own website. It's never to be included on public facing sites. So this is on the permission slip, it's on the backside uh, for parents to see, but it is that you cannot post them on any public facing sites, so therefore no Facebook um, garage sale pages, no business pages, no putting it out on Craigslist or anything that is not your own personal website that you own. So we will, um, you know, as a service unit person, you will probably be getting some of these. Uh, just always keep in mind that to keep the person who is uh, complaining or turning this in, keep them calm, let them know that, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time it is because somebody just got excited and forgot about the rule and put it on there. And it's a simple uh, phone call and it's a simple email or even a post of here, these are, the, these are the social media guidelines and it is all perfectly fine. We do have you know, some of the, uh, the extraordinary, which we will help you take care of, but with um, the amount of social media, we can't be there all the time. Um, this is just, so having that conversation with your parents is really good before the sale starts during the sale and it's always a good reminder um, as the sale is ongoing. So let's talk about eBuddy and what looks a little different this year. So uh, do you remember in the past we had the, always had like a password that was like do -si do 121 and that was how everybody could get on for the first time. Well, that is no longer the case. So now for single, single sign on is what it is being called. And we will send out and I will send it out um, November 13th is when um, I will send an email to all the troop leaders in eBuddy, and they will get an email that just says, welcome to the 2018-2019 Girl Scout cookie season. This is a really long link. It will not actually look that long uh, when they get the email, but it's just an invite that they can click on their own unique link, and um, it will take them to what is called the single sign-on, but it's the cookie tech portal. So when they click on that website, it'll say, um, you know, here you are change my password so they will type it in confirm their new password and hit change my password and then that will be their login for eBuddy for whenever they um, log in forever it will bring them to a screen and it will ask them for all of their information which they have to update uh, which is good for us and for you so that we get their um, email address that they want to be uh, taught or communicated through and then also the phone numbers that they want to be communicated through on this page so when we can look at it. And then once they get their account set up, this is why it is um, called the single sign-on. So there is eBuddy, there is VIP training, which we don't really use um, as a council anymore. We use the help center that's actually in eBuddy, but the digital cookie link will be here. And then we will be uh, setting up the eBuddy demo site for troops to go in and play around with. Um, but that will be set up for them on November 13th. So we will talk a little bit more about that in the troop sign on, um, but it will just be a way for them to go in and look at what eBuddy looks like without having to worry about putting any information on girls or uh, worry about any of the um, breaking or messing up anything in the troop, but they can go on and look and click on all the tabs and see what it looks like. Um, but then the cookie locator app here is as well. So girls, or you can type in a zip code in any of your, um, you know, wherever you are and find a boost cell right next to you. Uh, and that way you can make sure that your boost cells, if you ever forget which ones you want to go to, you can, I know lots of people that use that for a lot of different things. But if you look on the inside cover of the um, Troop Cookie Consultant Manual, there is always the old tried and true forgot your password. So if somebody doesn't get the email or if they um, you know, forgot and didn't click on the email and, or just deleted it, you can always go to ebuddy.littlebrownie.com just like normal. You can click on the enter your email address. If your email address is entered into the system, you can click your forgot password. It'll send you an email to update your password. So no need for that. Last year was the first year that we had an eBuddy Troop app and we had um, more than 1.8 million packages ordered through the app as a little, all the little Brownie councils. Um, but it actually won an award uh, for 
um, the way that the app works. I don't know all about that, but it is uh, really exciting um, that it worked so well. So now we have added more things to the eBuddy app. So one of the cool things is that uh, Western Oklahoma was one of the top users. So for our little region where um, we have um, about nine, I think now even 10 councils in Tallery as our sales rep, um, but in all of her councils, we had the most percentage of people using it and some of the highest number of uh, users. So it's pretty exciting uh, that we are adopting so well to technology in our council. But some of the updates for this year, messaging, you'll be able to um, type or send messages to all of your troop um, people through the app. The boost sell sign up waitlist option, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, pending order transactions to a cupboard will now be in, which was one of the things I definitely wanted. And then they will let you see previous sales data from, um, from previous years in the troop app so when you log in as a service unit i will tell you you won't be able to see um, other troops from a service unit angle so if you have a troop you'll be able to see this but um, the only way to see what other troops are looking at from the uh, service unit perspective is you can go to that troop on the contacts tab on an actual desktop and there's a jump to and um, I'll make it, hopefully, I believe there's a video that we'll be sending out shortly about how to do that as far as the service unit. So you can see what it would look like on their iPhone or on their phone, but you won't actually be able to see from a service unit perspective um, on the Troop app, not yet. Hopefully that will come in the coming years. But a Troop, uh, as a service unit, you can put in a, a um, message and we will talk about that where you can put that in um, but it will have to be shown it'll pop up uh, on their screen as the troop app and they have to actually confirm that they have read it or um, otherwise and it will be able to log when they have said that they read it booth sell sites you can go in and look at your booth sell sites and one of the new parts is that you can do a sign up waitlist. So what that looks like is you can click on the um, location is full, but that you want to be notified when it comes available. So you can save that and when somebody drops that booth sell slot or location, it will send an email to everybody who has signed up for that. So that may be a lot of people, it may only be you, but whoever gets to eBuddy the fastest, so get on your troop app and claim that spot and get to have it, um, but then if it drops again, it will be, um, it will send out another email. Troop transactions, um, so the pending orders, so you can pick your cupboard and where you want to pick them up. You can also do troop to troop transactions from here, and then um, it will go through and your troop or your cupboard will know where it is, so that is exciting. Um, it's exciting on our end because it would always make a funky day and time if when people did it from their phones as a cupboard manager. So it is exciting uh, for us that you can do that a little bit easier this year. And then you can also add your troop contacts and find all your troop contacts for your troop. Oops, sorry, I am messing up my, uh, in the app now, you don't have to do it from the desktop. And you can see previous sales data. So when you are in your initial order, you will be able to look at your girls and see how many packages um, they did last year. This is not the case for us because we do everything in the other tab. So you will see the other tab and see what your, um, how many you ordered for last year and be able to uh, enter that in if you wanted to. If you know you have the same amount of girls or you have less amount of girls, you can do your initial order from your uh, Troop app. So eBuddy Future, this is futuristic of how everything will incorporate in with Digital Cookie as well. So that is coming. Um, and never forget about littlebrownie.com. It's the one stop for cookie resources. So all kinds of printables and uh, activities that you can do with your girls are here. And they should have some, some old ones that are really, really good and time and true. And we have lots of new printables on there as well. 
So let's talk about initial order and how troops get started. So this is when we log into eBuddy. Uh, this is exactly what you will see. Um, and we're just going to go tab by tab, but we are going to start with initial order. And this is where the bulk of the troops' cookies come from. So recommended, we do a, we do recommend 190 boxes per girl selling, and we have an incentive for you to do that. So this is the only time we use per girl registered. So every girl that's registered in the troop, if you take your total number of boxes divided by total number of girls in the troop, and you have 190 boxes per girl, then we have um, two money bags that your troop can use. We were thinking about switching it up this year and some people were very strong and they're like, no, we didn't get that last year and we really want those money bags. So uh, they are a different pattern. So they are available this year um, as well. And then at 250 boxes per girl registered, we have a 36 by 20 and a half, so almost three feet by two feet cookie banner. And that's what it's going to look like, but it is pretty large and it's vinyl, so you can use that. Uh, at, you know, tie it to your troop um, or booth sale sites, or you can have girls use it uh, as a prop and hold it. Uh, however, they want to use it uh, at booth sale. So those are some of the fun things that your troop can use throughout the cookie season. We do have two tools that will come out in November after the uh, troop cookie consultant training. It will be a spreadsheet for returning troops and we give what each troop used in the last or ordered in the last sale and recommend 80% of and what that mix looks like. And then we also just have a basic sheet that new troops can use or maybe your troop has changed a lot that you can um, you can put in the uh, number of girls you have how, what you think your per boxes is going to be, and then it'll give you a suggestion of how you should break that up based on, I should get this many thin mints, this percentage of Samoas, and that's just kind of based on um, sales data from the previous years and where we've been. But it'll help you break that up. One of the parts about troop initial order is that um, it does seem like a risk sometimes to order that many boxes per girl. We do allow a return of troop initial order cookies through February um, 18th, which is a Monday. Uh, so it's the Monday after your first boost sale season. So if you just ordered way too many do -si dos or you had way too many, um, you know, Savannah Smiles is sometimes it, but people get kind of scared. So as long as you haven't checked those out from the cupboard, you can bring those back. And as long as they are also uh, free of damage and they're resellable unopened cases, uh, you just need to have your troops send an email to info at gswestok.org. We will just double check that they had not checked any more of that variety out of a cupboard, and then we will prove them to, to bring them back to a cupboard. So that is always an option, we just wanna make sure that you have enough cookies to sell through the first week of the sell while we're still delivering cookies uh, throughout the service units that your sometimes cupboards are hard to come by in that first week of the sale. So when troops log into eBuddy, they log into the dashboard, which gives you um, any important messages. So if you as a troop leader, or I'm sorry, me as the council person wanna put a message up there, or you as the service unit, consultant, we can put messages on the troop dashboard that will show um, what, so every time they log in, this is the screen they will see. You can also on the contacts page, that's where you can see all of the troop leaders, all of the chairs, any of the, um, for each troop, what all of the people that are listed in the troop as contacts. On the contacts page for your, your service unit, if you're actually on the service unit, um, clicking the service unit instead of an individual troop, you have this email branch, which is at the top. And it is um, how you can send an email to every single troop leader, troop cookie chair. You get to choose down here at the bottom which one you want to, uh, which one you want to use. But if you want to send it to everybody, you can click all of those little check boxes, send them an email, and it will go out. So if it is uh, first boost sale sign up and you want to remind everybody, you can just send a quick little email to all of the troops in your area. Troops in general, the next tab is the settings tab. Troops can edit their settings 
the only things that they can edit, they can add another leader or they can change things around to where people are troop leaders and um, or troop cookie chairs if they would like if we didn't get it right. Um, the only thing is they cannot edit it, like the number of girls selling that pulls automatically from the girls tab and the number of girls selling and registered um, pull from different spots. So those they cannot edit, but they can edit other leaders, and then they can edit um, their troop level. If they're no longer a Daisy Troop, they're a Brownie Troop, they can go ahead and change that if they want to. For service unit communication, here on the settings tab, you also have edit message. So when you click edit message, this little pop-up box will happen, and here you can enter in your message to the troop. So this is um, where it will pop up on the troop app and it's the first thing they have to read or this pops up on the service unit or I'm sorry the troop dashboard so it's up at the top for them to see when they get in um, to eBuddy. So on the girls tab that's, oops, that's the next tab we uh, do not move start uploading girls until November 1st, uh, it'll be November 2nd this year, but we want to make sure that our data is as clean as possible because um, it's a lot harder to remove girls once they get into eBuddy. So we're giving some time for troop support to help uh, clean up all the troop rosters with troop leaders and um, then get so we can get them in. Troop leaders cannot edit um, girls at all, their name or their grade. Um, or if they are in there or not, you can't add a missing girl. So if someone is missing or if any of the information is incorrect, you just need to send an email to info at GS West OK with the girl um, that is either missing or the girl that might have something wrong so that they can get in uh, or so that we can get it updated in volunteer systems and then get it updated into eBuddy. So two things that troop leaders can do are edit the shirt size and the sales goal. The shirt size is important here because if you enter the shirt size for a girl, it will automatically populate on the tab, um, orders, rewards, I'm sorry, rewards tab, and you won't have to fill in those blanks when there's a shirt entry. And on the bottom of the permission slip, when you have a girl's permission slip, um, we do ask parents to fill out her shirt size, and so you can put that shirt size um, directly into eBuddy from that permission slip form. Initial order tab, here we are finally. Uh, once you click on the initial order tab, you're going to see all of the girls from your troop listed. And then we want to make sure that we put the troops initial order in the other tab. So once we enter um, initial orders, we can't take them off of girls once we submit. So that's just something we ask for you to check um, help us check for as the service unit uh, troops have until 11.59 to, uh, I'm sorry, 11.59 on January 3rd to enter their initial order. And you as the service unit will have until Sunday, January 6th to submit your service unit's initial order. So if you could help us kind of look for that, uh, you can change it or you can send us a quick message that says, hey, this troop doesn't have it, we will change it for them as well. I kind of try and go through and look at all of these uh, to make sure that um, they all get put in the other column, um, but they do need to be ordered in full cases, so multiples of 12, um, otherwise eBuddy will round it up for them. And then we do suggest that troops order six boxes of toffee tastics per girl so i think that was a little bit lower last year i think we did three boxes but we learned that that wasn't enough for troops for most troops so once you um as a troop leader are done you would click submit order and a little pop-up box will come up and say you need to choose a delivery site so next is the delivery tab and on the delivery tab depending on what service unit you are in there are different options so for service units that come to Oklahoma City Warehouse pickup which is January 25th and 26th this little drop down box here will have um, a day and time and then different slots that you need to pick so troops can begin putting in their service or their initial order on December 1st and so the faster you put it in, the more better or the better options you have for a time slot um, to pick up your cookies. But if you are in an outside service unit that does not come to Oklahoma City Warehouse Pickup, it will just be your service unit. And so if you will pick 
um, you know, they just need to choose their service unit and hit save, then that will make sure that they get that, or their cookies get sent to the delivery station. So delivery basics, um, Oklahoma City Warehouse Else Pickup is a, what is that? It is a big um, caravan of cookies and where we send, um, we put all of the pallets of cookies out on the ground. We have a bunch of warehouse guys that help people load cookies into the car. So it's just a drivetrain through. We are getting, um, I go to a couple of other service units that do a lot of cookies in their pickup too. Um, so that's something that as a service unit person, uh, we just need to know the location and um, the best date and time, we can always try and work with our delivery agent to get those out to you um, so that they, we can work with your schedule the best uh, for the delivery station. So the most important thing is receiving. So once I, as a troop leader, have gone and got my cookies and I have taken them back to my or to my house, hopefully I've unloaded them and I've recounted them again to make sure that what I was supposed to pick up from the um, from the delivery station is what I actually made it home with. That is uh, something that is a great idea. And then I'm going to schedule times for my parents to come pick up cookies. And the most important part of that is receiving. So for receipts, I want to um, show you what we kind of recommend as the process for receiving. Uh, this is important because this is the responsible or this transfers financial responsibility of the cookies from the troop to the parent. And then when the parent turns in money, it takes that financial responsibility off the parent and puts it back onto the troop. So the troop needs to deposit that money. So that's why receipts are very, very important. We ask that both parties sign a receipt. So a parent must sign each receipt that they turned in money or that they are taking out cookies. And then a troop leader uh, is also signing both receipts. We recommend checking up to seven cases out to each girl. So that is each girl. So if you have two sisters, you can check out seven cases to sister one and seven cases to sister two. Just make sure that you are explaining to parents that that's, um, you know, that's a lot of money. Um, but that is a guaranteed, we will reimburse you up to seven cases for um, each girl as a troop leader. So if that parent takes seven cases of cookies and never comes back to a troop meeting, your troop is not out. That's $348. It is um, we will, what you would owe counsel, we will take back uh, or reimburse you at the end of the year. So here's how to fill out a receipt. We have a, um, at the very top, there's money and product. So if we are checking out cookies, we would circle the product. We recommend that troops do a numbering system on their uh, receipts. So it's much easier if a parent says, um, yeah, no, I have this receipt dated this date, but they don't have anything, um, you know, if it's a lot easier to say, well, no, on troop seven or receipt number 17, you, um, I paid this much money. It's a lot easier to go back and find them when they're in numerical order. We ask you to fill out the number of boxes. Uh, you can put number of cases or number of boxes, however you would like. And then I like to break it out into detail that this girl took 72 boxes at $4 and 12 boxes at $5 and break that apart. So it's a good reminder for parents to say that they um, know that some of the boxes are $5 and not just $4. And that's a total of $348 that will be um, due to the troop. Make sure the girl's name and last initial are on there. And you as the troop leader will sign it and then the parent will sign it. And then, of course, we don't want to give out any more cookies to that parent until they have returned money in to the um, troop. So money is just as important. We circle money at the top. Hopefully have our numbering system in there. Um, the only thing that is missing on these is the date. So I need to get a date in on, the, on this slide. Uh, I like to break it down into as much detail as they can for how they paid. So if they paid $48 in cash and $12 in checks, and even more so if they had um, three checks that equaled $12, I would make a little parentheses here with three checks uh, just to make sure that I have as much detail as I can. And then $60 total is what they paid. And make sure we have the girl's name, the parent will sign that 
it was received in um, the true blue herb, but they gave it and the parent received it. So that is, um, makes it a little bit easier at the end of the season, anytime we have anything uh, that we need to um, investigate or you know, go after a parent for unpaid funds, then we can go look at all of these receipts because we do need receipts to be able to track that. So now that you've written a receipt, uh, you will go to the Girl Orders tab and enter that information into um, the troop or into eBuddy so that you can see the, uh, the amount due and where the troop is at. So on page 25 of the Troop Consultant Manual, this is going to be um, different than what is actually in the manual. So we did make the decision, uh, or we actually have the option for the first time in a long time, to make the decision where we can track it by um, variety. And we made that decision after we'd already sent our cookie consult manual to print. So the uh, cookie consult manual will still say um, girl, or I'm sorry, cookies and operation cookie drop and specialty cookies, and that is not um, no longer the case. So I want to point that out that that is not going to be uh, correct in the book, but we will be sending lots of emails um, around allocating cookies the first week and then of course when rewards are due so that um, we will make sure people get the training on how to allocate cookies. So it will be you click on the girl order tab, the list of girls will pull up. You can click on Miss uh, Bella here if you want to enter her information and then you will click add transaction and adding the transaction will make these little boxes pop up at the bottom and you can enter exactly what the receipt said so if you have receipt one and then all of the number of boxes that she took you can click OK and save and it will do this one of the things when we talk about receipting and um, trying to keep a running balance it's a little bit harder with digital cookie to keep that running balance on paper alone so when you are writing a receipt to parent you can go ahead and pull up that troop app enter the girl's cookies right then and there and it will automatically calculate and same thing when they turn in a payment and put in the payment with the troop app and it will go ahead and calculate all of the uh, what they have owe in um, owe the troop and that does include digital cookie when it looks through the app so new this year there's no longer the deposits tab it is going to be the payments tab that is what um, the next tab is or one of the next tabs. So the payment tab represents payments that are made to the council. And um, we take them two or sorry, three times during the cookie sale, one two weeks after um, the cookie sale has started, one in the middle of March, and then at the very final uh, ACH at the end. So what we do is we upload a number a week before telling you what your first ACH amount will be or your second ACH amount. Um, the final ACH amount, we do not do this. Uh, but look at your troop and payments tab and see how much uh, we will be taking out of your account. It's a broad formula that is um, not applies to everyone. It's a little bit harder when you just do a basic formula to all troops. So if you are a troop that has a lot of um, ambition and you're going to sell a lot of cookies, but you don't want to go to the cookie cupboard every other day then you might have a really large initial order and when we do just our broad formula of taking half of your initial order as payment due you may not be able to cover that because you haven't sold all those cookies yet when that's perfectly fine we just need you to look at the amount and send us an email within 48 hours of february 19th but um send us an email that says uh, this is my troop number, this is the amount I can pay, and we will change that. We'll give you confirmation through um, Salesforce or volunteer systems, and then we will uh, change it in eBuddy as well. But there's no shame in that. A lot of people think that that's a bad thing, but if you need to change your payment, that is perfectly fine. And that applies to all of them except for uh, your final ACH payment. Then uh, if you can't make your final ACH payment, then we'll talk about how we can get that. Um, you know, make sure that we don't need to transfer some cookies out to other troops or something else like that. So on collecting money, money should be deposited into your troop account on a regular basis. Uh, it's a lot of money that a lot of troops kind of, you know, when troop proceeds are over 2000 that means you're taking in a lot of money. And so you want to um, make sure you're putting that money 
especially checks into the deposit or into the troop account weekly, if not two times a week. Uh, troops, or I'm sorry, according to the Oklahoma District Attorney, we do need to put up deposit checks within 30 days of the date written on the check. So if you are collecting from parents uh, on a regular basis, then um, that's a really good reason to tell them you need to take it in every other week, um, if not more, because they we need to get checks into the bank account before. So if there is a problem, if there is a, uh, a reason we have to, you know, unfortunately take a bad check from someone that we can work with the district attorney to get that money back. Troop money should never be deposited into a personal bank account. And then also during your parent meeting, talk about checks that are not pre-printed. Um, all of the person's information should be printed on the check. Um, we just don't want to take temporary checks. So boost sales, let's talk about boost sales. On the service unit level, we did put um, in the standards of brilliance now the swag a boost cell coordinator position. And um, one of the things that we really want to talk about with boost cell slots is um, when it's always a compliment to be really successful at something and then people imitate you, right? So uh, one of the biggest issues that we are having right now is um, a lot of other youth organizations want to be at the same spot we are during our cookie season. And so we really need to get a jump on right now um, getting in booking time. So if your service unit hasn't sent in a service unit cookie consultant, or I'm sorry, booth consultant to Morgan um, at this time, she wants to start doing some training next week and she'll be doing individual training with uh, service unit booth consultants. Um, reach out, reach out beyond your, um, your core group of volunteers in your service unit, ask parents, uh, have each troop leader ask parents if it's something that they would be willing to do for booth sales, especially parents who like to go to booth sales. It's just calling up some people, booking time, and sending a spreadsheet back to Morgan. It's not, um, a lot of times it's just that it takes one to two um, times to call. Sometimes you call and the, or the store manager's not there, not the person you need to talk to. So um, we just really need to get a jump on that and get that booked now before other organizations can book those with us. So that's um, if you're getting hounded, that's the that's the reason. So uh, I think we all know you should have two approved adult volunteers. And oh, I'm going to run a little bit over on time, so I'm going to speed up just a little bit. Booth sales. Uh, the first sign up is January 18th. So what you would do, you go to the booth sale tab, click on the city that you want to go to, and the location you want to go to, and it drops down all of the times that that is scheduled. And if one of these boxes is open or blank, you can click in it and click submit, and that will um, that will op or save it for your troop. So the first booth they'll sign up January 18th at 9 p.m. Um, we will make sure and get as many booth cell slots in there as we can. So also on the booth cell tab, you can see this little drop down box. If you click it and go to my sales, that is where you can. Um, put in information that your troop is going to do a booth sale at a location that's not already in eBuddy. So um, the only time um, we do say that my sales are first come first serve, the only time that this is not the case is sometimes we have more than one troop calling a location and one troop is talking to the store manager and the other troop talks to the floor manager and they both schedule times at the same time. Well then we get into a situation where we have to deny someone, so they call and they complain to the service or to the store manager, and that is usually a time where we have to step in and talk to the store manager and apologize and then say, um, let me tell you what we can do and how we have eBuddy as a solution, and we will only have to deal with one contact, and we will do the scheduling of the rest of the troop. So sometimes we, last year we got into a situation where we had to do that um, to two or three different businesses where we uh, stepped in and took over the my sales, um, but it was because we had to make sure that troops were playing nicely and working with the, um, with the business. So troops can start entering my sales information uh, uh, after January 3rd, so it will actually pop up on January 4th. 
um, but after initial order, they can start entering where their micelle locations are going to be. And they are approved daily, but I put in parentheses business hours daily. So if you have a boost sale opportunity um, on Saturday, obviously we would like for you to get that in um, within on a Friday so that we can approve it. Um, but if you get it in at Friday at 12 or you know midnight, then well, then boost sale is approved or it's supposed to be on Saturday morning. Um, we may not be there to get that approved. So just information. This is what the desktop version will look like. It will say notify me if booth slots open for um, the time slot. If they are full, you can click on that and then it will email you. If you are done, you no longer can want that booth cell, you can always click stop notifying me and submit on the booth cell tab and that will stop it. Booth cell recorder app is part of um, the single sign-on and then it's also part of the troop app and then it's also um, still here on the booth cell recorder so when you go to record cells for booth cells so it'll say council cells my cells record cells on this little drop down box you can enter in um, how many booth cell or cookies you had so the booth cell booth cookie booth tally sheet sorry is updated and it's in your uh, consultant manual, but it is now in order for the troops to, uh, or in order for eBuddy. So it's a little bit easier. Um, that was our mistake last year. So it's in there, but you put how many booths or cookies you sold at the booth and click on the number of girls that were there and distribute them and submit the sale and it will do all of that for you. And that is in the troop app. So of course, cookie cupboards, they are ran by volunteers in your area. Nothing has really changed with the cookie um, cupboards, just that uh, we ask that troops place their eBuddy pending order 48 hours in advance. Uh, that's how long, so we can't guarantee flavors or varieties will be there. If it is um, more than, um, or if it's very quickly, uh, we can only, it takes about 48 hours to get our logistics agent to be able to get the cookies to a location. Um, and then the, just a reminder, there's no returns on cookies that are picked up from a cupboard unless we are doing a promotion. So, How do you make a cookie cupboard order on the cookie or on the transactions page? You would click add a transaction and there is the cookie cupboard um, will pop up here. You will have a drop down box on the other side that will say all of the cupboards in um, the council that are open and you can uh, click which one you want to do. There is a notes section, so make sure troop leaders are reading the notes and how to um, work with the volunteer that is running their cupboard. There's also a troop to troop transfer option, and it's the same thing on the transaction page. You'll click add a transaction. The only difference is you'll have to use the drop down box to do a troop instead of a cupboard. And troop to troop transactions are um, so you're maybe you're at a booth sale and somebody says, Man, Savannah Smiles have been selling like crazy today, but your troop only has two Savannah Smiles. Those two troop leaders can write a receipt and um, do a troop to troop transfer option um, right then and there. And the troop that gives the cookies away enters the transaction into eBuddy. And then we do ask for the receipt um, in your troop paperwork at the end just to make sure that inventory all adds up for and the troops are paying the right amount for cookies. But that is how you do a troop to troop transfer. Something that is exciting this year um, is the cookie exchange that will come up in March. But the cookie exchange is a new tab and you can put here at the top, I have these cookies to exchange with another troop. So if you want have um, Savannah Smiles and Tagalongs that you have additional of that you would like for another troop to take, you can click that in there and put submit. Or if you're looking for cookies, you can look for, say you really need Samoas, the cupboards are all closed, you can click this drop down box and it will show you um, an email and a phone number for a troop that has cookies um, that are, is willing to exchange so that you can call them, text them, or email them. Um, and it, the one thing to keep in mind is this will just help you find cookies. It will not actually do the troop to troop transfer for you. So you will have to go back to the transactions tab and do the troop um, 
do the troop uh, to troop transfer. This will only go in boxes. So great question uh, in the chat box um, that this needs to be in boxes. So if you want a full case, you'll have to put in 12, but maybe you know you only have 10 boxes, but you're willing to give those to someone if they will take them. So you would enter those in in boxes. Digital Cookie is back. Um, I will send out these slides to you because this is just a lot of Digital Cookie data if you would like to see it, but we are always one of the top um, councils in percentage of girls who use Digital Cookie. Uh, it's always great to be on webinars uh, about Digital Cookie because people um, are always like, how do you do it? How are you so successful? And it's like, we just have really great volunteers who understand how to use digital cookie and really good parents that understand it. So um, a big part of getting the data cleaned up for um, your troop roster is once the digital cookie upload has happened, we cannot delete girls, we can only move girls. So we are scheduled to upload on December 4th um, for digital cookie. And then they will take all of our information and get it loaded in. And then emails to volunteers, to get registered for Digital Cookie will be sent out on December 29th of this year. And then emails to parents to register for Digital Cookie is um, scheduled to go out on January 5th. So Digital Cookie opens on January 25th um, for girls to start sending out emails and things like that. Um, but they cannot get access to that until January 25th. Um, logging in and registering uh, you can get your page set up, you can get everything ready to go, but it will not actually send emails until January 25th. Digital Cookie looks no different um, on the Troop page. Uh, it is the exact same for this year. But I just wanted to show you there. Um, last year we did 84% more boxes. Um, we had an increase of 84% of total boxes that were sold through the Digital Cookie platform, which includes the girl delivery platform, which was our highest jump, um, but also that includes in-person. So girl delivery includes in-person, which was our biggest um, jump. So I'll include these slides in our uh, deck, uh, what I'll send to you if you wanna go back and look at them, but it has proven that girls that use digital cookie do sell more cookies and it's um, a great, great way to grow. So now let's talk about rewards for just a quick second. So um, you have seen the rewards card that is um, in your packet. We have most of the same great trips coming back with all the dates and all the dates are listed on the reward card as well. And the um, troop PGA rewards are back. So this is per girl selling. We have a troop, um, a patch for each girl that sells if you reach 250 PGA and you get two for the two troop leaders and we can probably negotiate if you need more than that. And um, the troop bonus tee is for each girl selling and one troop cookie consultant. The coolest part about this this year is that we will still send out an email to those of you who um, would like to order additional shirts, but part of the rewards tab this year, so when you uh, submit your troop rewards, um, you will be able to order your one free one. So it will come in uh, then and I'm so excited about it. More Adventure Club is back. So girls who participate in the 2018 fall product sale and sold at least 12 items and then also sell 100 boxes of Girl Scout cookies um, in the 2019 cookie sale will get more, um, be a part of the More Adventure Club, which is a special patch and then a $25 council um, camp certificate good for Girl Scout Western Oklahoma camp. Uh, so day camp, resident camp, um, travel camp, weekend camp, so it will be able to be used. So how do you do rewards? It's on the rewards tab. You click fill out. It will tell you if a girl needs attention. It'll be read and say that they have an um, issue. And then what that issue is, is that you just need to choose for them if they want um, certain levels. Uh, and then, like I said, if your t-shirt, if you put your t-shirt size in the uh, girls order or just in the girls tab, sorry, then it will pre-populate and already show up for um, your rewards. As the service unit, the only thing that is a little bit different about the rewards is on the service unit side. Um, when you click on the rewards tab, it will ask you to review all of the rewards for each of the troops. 
and you can just make double check to make sure that they have um, the orders and or that they have submitted their troop reward orders. Sometimes they're all filled out, they just didn't hit submit. And so if you could hit submit for them. And then we need to know where you want your service units reward shipped. So if you will fill out this information, update your shipping address, and then when everybody is complete, um, the rewards order will, you can submit for your entire service unit. So troops have until March 27th at 1159 to get all of the information entered. Um, so all of the orders in our receipts, all of the rewards, everything taken care of in um, eBuddy. And then as a tr service unit consultant, you have until uh, March 31st, which is a Sunday night um, to get that all in. And then we as a uh, council need to get that reward order in so that they can get shipped out to, um, <clears throat> to make it in time before back to school. So we do have coming back Operation Cookie Drop. Um, we ha still have Little Red Wagon Day, which is Saturday, February 9th. We do have the five for five contest, which is gonna look a little bit different this year. So instead you will not see a paper form in your um, cookie consultant manual. Five for five is going to be business cards that are given um, to the girls. So they will be available on the website to be printed. And then they will also be a rally activity, but girls can then hand their five for five business card to the um, customer directly. And the customer can go to our website uh, it'll have a direct link for the 5 for 5 entry, and they can enter their information and um, not having to worry about collecting all of that paperwork at the end. So it will be a rally activity for girls to be able to see. National Girl Scout Cookie Weekend, February 22nd through the 24th, and um, that's always a big deal. So I really encourage you to pay attention to our social media um, around then. We will probably have some promotions and contests. And then one of the biggest things, this will also be a cookie rally activity, but our um, G, uh, Girl Scout GSU, or oh my goodness, sorry, G Cookie Pro Contest, the GSUSA Cookie Pro Contest. Um, more winners this year, and they will get to go uh, to Warner Brothers Studio and go backstage and learn, get a big behind the scenes uh, tour of the DC Superhero Girls. So what that is, is you can go to um, the 2019 Girl Scout Cookie Pro page starting on January 1st. Girls will just fill out a little application and then they will be asked to submit a graphic novel, um, which is the comic strip, and uh, <clears throat> they will be all entered in to win this great experience, but then they, every single girl that enters will unlock the limited edition Cookie Pro 2019 patch and they will be able to um, get a certificate, print off a certificate, bring it to our Girl Scout store in um, the council office and they buy the patch there or they can order it online and have it shipped to their house. So that is exciting. And then that's it. So um, basically right now you guys are available to log into eBuddy. Just go ahead and use that forget password option. Um, everyone I believe is in there except for I will get uh, Karina, I'll get you in there because uh, I don't have you in there yet. But um, everybody who is on this call, I will make sure that you have the option to get into eBuddy and look. Right now, you will see troops, but you will not see troop roles. Um, the contacts page has not been uploaded, and then you will not see girls until December, or I'm sorry, November 2nd. So um, hopefully by the end of the week, we'll get uh, troop leaders in, um, but they will not be sent that initial invite email until. Uh, the day of Tuesday, November 13th. So make sure everyone in the service unit knows about your service unit training. Um, if you're doing the webinar with us on Tuesday, November 13th, that they are available to uh, know where to come to, how to get there, uh, things like that. And then if you haven't reached out to Morgan, Morgan's trying to get that so that we can send an email out to all troop leaders on um, November 1st so that they are invited to where they're going to go. But if your service unit is doing a different meeting time, um, I know some of them do it like the first week, their December meeting, that's their training. So let us know that information as well. And that way we can make sure all um, service units are represented with that. When you do have your service unit training, make sure you're passing out your troop cookie consultant manuals. And uh, you can go ahead and give out all the other information to troops, such as their um, 
troop or their parent permission slips and the troop money envelopes if you want to, troop receipts, things like that. We do just ask you to hold on to the girl order cards until the January service unit meeting or until initial order um, pickup. So it's a really good thing to pass out those troop cookie consultant manuals right then, have them sign their troop cookie consultant um, agreement form, which is in the troop cookie consultant manual and have them uh, turn that into you on that day. And then of course, check in with the troops after the webinar um, when, or yes, so after they get trained to go in and check their girls tab and make sure that it is correct. So that is it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to enter them in. Otherwise, we are, uh, we are complete for right now, but like I said, we're always here to help. We are always here to make sure that um, you guys are supported and we know it's a lot of information. So we will definitely be sending you guys lots of emails as well. Uh, during the cookie season so that you have some just-in-time information and what to do, um, you know, for the next deadline that is coming up. So, thanks. I'm excited about the new changes, too. There's a couple of really cool things that um, not having a new cookie this year, they could have, um, they could use all that promotional money to update the Troop app and to update uh, eBuddy with some functions that were sometimes a dream world. Um, yes, I can show you a, the slide again about social media, and I can tell you it's on the back of the parent permission slip as well if you want to look at that, um, but let me get back to it real quick. No, it's at the beginning. When you have 80 slides, it's a little bit too much. There's the social media one. Keep your questions coming. I'm going to stop the recording. So I just want to thank you guys so much for your time. I know um, it goes by very, very quickly. So once again, we will have this um, recorded so that you can watch it because I know you want to um, hear my voice all the time uh, and sit through training all the time. But we will talk about this more during the, um, or you know, most of the nitty or gritty or stuff uh, during the troop consultant training as well. So thank you. Keep your questions coming if you have them. <laughs>